Now it's time for this episode's elementary graduate. The joke here is, if you came out of the elementary canal, it means you're a piece of dren. From theguardian.org, by Darna Noor and Oliver Millman. As the world's largest investor-owned oil company, Exxon is among the top contributors to global planet heating greenhouse gas emissions. Exxon. But in an interview published this month, Darren Woods, chief executive of oil giant ExxonMobil, argued that big oil is not the one primarily responsible for the climate crisis. You are made of stupid. The real issue, Woods said, is that clean energy transition may prove too expensive for consumers' liking. In an interview with Fortune last week, he said... The dirty secret nobody talks about is how much all of this is going to cost and who's willing to pay for it. The people who are generating those emissions need to be aware of and pay the price for generating those emissions. This is ultimately how you solve the problem, Woods said. The world was not on the path to cut its planet heating emissions by net, to net zero by 2050, which scientists say is imperative to avoid catastrophic impacts of global heating. When are people going to be willing to pay for carbon reductions, said Woods, who has been Exxon's chief executive since 2017. We have opportunities to make fuels with lower carbon in it, but people aren't willing to spend the money to do that. Oh, good for you! Experts say Woods' rhetoric is part of a larger attempt to skirt climate accountability. Some men just want to watch the world burn. No, you don't say. No new major oil and gas infrastructure can be built if the world is to avoid breaching agreed temperature limits. But Exxon, along with other major oil companies currently basking in record profits, are pushing ahead with aggressive fossil fuel expansion plans. Narcissistic, self-indulgent people with a simple philosophy. Give me it, it's mine! It's like a drug lord blaming everyone but himself for drug problems, said Gernot Wagner, a climate economist at Columbia Business School. In unrelated news, now it's time for Oedipal Earth. From IMF.org by Simon Black, Ian Perry, and Nate Vernon. As the world struggles to restrict global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and parts of Asia, Europe, and the United States swelter in extreme heat, subsidies for oil, coal, and natural gas are costing the equivalent of 7.1% of global gross domestic product. Global. Global. That's more than governments spend annually on education, 4.3% of the global income, and about two-thirds of what they spend on health care, 10.9% of the global income. Our findings come as the World Meteorological Organization says July was the hottest month on record, underscoring the urgent need to curb human-induced climate change. Fossil fuel subsidies rose by $2 trillion over the past two years as explicit subsidies, a.k.a. undercharging for supply costs, more than doubled to 1.3 trillion. Consuming fossil fuels imposes enormous environmental cost, mostly from local air pollution and damage from global warming. The vast majority of subsidies are implicit, as environmental costs are often not reflected in prices for fossil fuels, especially for coal and diesel. These implicit subsidies are projected to grow as developing countries, which tend to have higher polluting power plants, factories, and vehicles, along with dense populations living and working close to these pollution sources, as they increase their consumption of fossil fuels towards the levels of an advanced economy. If governments remove explicit subsidies and impose corrective taxes, fuel prices would increase. This would lead firms and households to consider environmental costs when making consumption and investment decisions. The result would be cutting global carbon dioxide emissions significantly, cleaner air, less lung and heart disease, and more fiscal space for governments. But who would want that? 
We estimate that scrapping explicit and implicit fossil fuel subsidies would prevent 1.6 million premature deaths annually. Let's hear that again. We estimate that scrapping explicit and implicit fossil fuel subsidies would prevent 1.6 million premature deaths annually, raise government revenues by $4.4 trillion, and put emissions on track towards reaching global warming targets. It would also redistribute income as fuel subsidies benefit rich households more than poor ones. You don't say. Yet, removing fuel subsidies can be tricky. Governments must design, communicate, and implement reforms clearly and carefully as part of a comprehensive policy package that underscores the benefits. A portion of the increased revenues should be used to compensate vulnerable households for higher energy prices. The remainder could be used to cut taxes on work and investment and fund public goods such as education, health care, and clean energy. Wait, did you just mention clean energy? From IFLScience.com by Holly Large. A small municipality in Finland could soon be home to a big old battery, and a pretty unusual one at that. It stores thermal energy in sand. It's hoped this sand battery could increase the storage of renewable energy to meet year-round heating demands and with it help cut carbon emissions. The battery is designed to by startup Polar Night Energy and is due to be built over the next 13 months in Pornainen, Finland. Once constructed, the company estimates that it could lead to a reduction in yearly carbon dioxide emissions of nearly 70%. That's largely due to the predicted complete elimination of oil use and a roughly 60% reduction in the burning of wood chips. So how will the people of Pornainen get their heat from the battery? The sand battery itself will be a 13 meter high, 43 feet, 15 meter wide, 49 feet, so 43 by 49 foot silo filled with crushed soapstone, which conducts heat better than conventional sand, and heat transfer pipes. The plan is that when excess electricity is produced from wind and solar sources, a process called resistive heating will be used to convert it to thermal energy. This will heat up air which is then circulated through the silo using the heat transfer pipes and in doing so warms up the surrounding crushed soapstone. When conventional energy sources get a bit pricey, such as during winter months, the hot air can then be discharged into the district's heating systems.